हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर नवीन अग्रवाल आई एम एन इंटरनेशनल कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट प्रैक्टिसिंग एट वलसाड़ एंड वापी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ गुजरात माय टॉपिक फॉर टुडेज डिस्कशन इज रिगार्डिंग कॉन्ट्रास्ट कॉन्ट्रास्ट इज बेसिकली अ डाय और अ सब्सटेंस व्हिच इज यूज्ड इन एन एंजियोग्राफी प्रोसीजर टू सी द वेसल्स नॉर्मली व्हेनेवर वी हैव अ angiography procedure uh, if at all we are not using any contrast the x-ray or the radiation beams which are used during the procedure that will pass through the body through and through and that will not opacify the vessels because the blood which is flowing in the con- uh, in the vessels normally that will allow the radiation beams to pass through and through and that will not obstruct the pathway of the radiation beams whenever we are filling the vessels or the uh, structures which we at all we want to see during an angiography procedure or any other radiology procedure this contrast is filled inside the lumen of the cavity or uh, wherever area which you want to uh, image in during the procedure this contrast will be filled inside that area and this contrast will not allow the radiation beams to pass through once the radiation beam is caught inside the uh, contrast then the image intensifier which is present on the other side of the uh, body or the on the other side of the radiation beam that will recognize that area uh, as completely blank because the radiation beam will be passing from the other sides of the vessel but the vessel which is filled with the contrast that will not allow the radiation beam to pass through and this will be seen as a blank space on the image intensifier screen and uh, this can be interpreted by the digital imaging technology as a image of the vessel and if at some portion the vessel is becoming suddenly narrow or suddenly it is uh, restricted or it is completely stopped and there is no uh, blood no contrast flow in uh, that particular point of area then that can be interpreted by the image intensifier as that area is having a stenosed vessel or a completely blocked vessel and the cardiologist or the person who is interpreting the angiographic image can understand based on the various forms of images which are required what exactly is the disease pathology how Uh, narrow is the vessel how broad is the vessel what is the size of the vessel what is the diameter of the vessel what is the length of the vessel which is involved what is the length of the blockage which is involved what are the uh, percentage of blood which is flowing through the vessel and how early the intervention is uh, to be planned in this cases also this contrast is the same thing which is used during an angioplasty procedure also because this will help in guiding the procedure if at all we have to position a stent then we place a stent across the blockage and we inject contrast to see whether the stent is exactly and appropriately placed across the blockage and based on that we can decide whether and in which condition the stent has to be deployed or any other interventional procedure has to be done that also everything uh, has to be done only with the help of a contrast uh, that is why any interventional cardiology procedure is almost impossible as of now without the use of a contrast Uh, CT also uses the same contrast. MRI uses a different form of contrast, which is known as gadolinium. But MRI also, in selected cases, there is uh, something known as a contrast, which is used in MRI also. But CT angiography and regular angiography, both of them are almost impossible without contrast. Although CT scan without contrast is also possible, plain CT scan without contrast is possible. But it will not show you the vessels, or it will not show you any blockages. If at all you want to see the lumen and you want to see the blockages, or if you want to see anything which is not usually opacified by the ct beam then you have to use a contrast in all of these cases that is why is the importance of this contrast and that is why it is becomes very important for all of us to know what exactly is this contrast and what is it made up of what are the types of contrast why it is important and uh, what exactly is the damage which it can cause which we need to be careful about this topic is going to be important and interesting and clinically useful that's why i would recommend you to see the topic till the end the people who are new to my channel i would request them to subscribe to my channel as this gives us a lot of inspiration and motivation to continue the channel in the future if at all you have any comments queries or uh, questions regarding to the topic or if at all you have any patient related queries also you can feel free to ask us about them in the comment section below and we'll try to answer your questions and sort out your queries so coming back to the topic to the topic of today is what is contrast contrast basically is a dye which is used to fill the vessel to do a angiography procedure it is basically containing a chemical which is made of iodine iodine uh, is the substance sometimes we use in salts also to uh, which is known as iodized salt that is the same substance which is used by the thyroid gland of the neck to produce hormones this iodine is basically a chemical or a uh, product which is present inside the contrast which makes this contrast visible uh, in an x-ray beam contrast is on of basically two types ionic and non ionic contrast uh, ionic contrast is the earlier generation high osmolarity or highly dense contrast which was used in olden days 
this contrast has a very high osmolarity and can have a large amount of chemical re uh, reactions also in the body can cause a large amount of kidney damage also large amount of this uh, contrast if it all used can be detrimental to the heart also it can lead to heart failure also can cause some arrhythmias also the amount of allergic reactions to this contrast is also higher that is why ionic contrast is not used these days it is much cheaper so some hospitals are still using it but uh, as compared to that because this contrast is very dense and not uh, uh, iso osmolar as compared to what is the blood is that is why this is not used commonly now you will ask what is this iso osmolarity means basically blood has a certain um, osmolarity or a density at which if at all we use a substance the substance will find it easier to gel if at all we are using some substance which is having having more osmolarity or substance which is having less osmolarity that will cause a lot of amount of problems in the blood because higher osmolar substance will absorb water from the blood and will cause dehydration of the blood which will affect the metabolism of the body so uh, if at all we are using a chemical which is iso osmolar that is for example if the osmolarity of the blood is 300 we are using a chemical which is exactly of the osmolarity of 300 then the fluid imbalance and the change of the osmolarity of the blood and the adjustment with the blood has to do is much lesser as compared to the change which has been done with a osmolarity of 350 or 400 which is usually the osmolarity of the ionic contrast and this causes a lot of amount of chemical reactions and adverse events in the body the newer generation or the non ionic contrast have relatively more balanced sort of osmolarity as compared to what the blood is and their osmolarity will be somewhere around Uh, maybe if it all blood osmolarity is 300 so their osmolarity will be 310 or 320 so the amount of ph change and amount of uh, hemodynamic alteration which is caused in the body because of the contrast is much lesser in the non ionic contrast as compared to the ionic ones that is why majority of the cases majority of the countries and majority of the cardiologists are using non ionic contrast only but only issue is this this almost two times or three times costlier as compared to the ionic contrast that is why in some hospitals where the people want to save cost they are still using ionic contrast but majority of the hospitals maybe 95% of the hospitals as of now are using only non ionic contrast because it is causing much less toxic side effects and the kidney damage and the heart damage is also much lesser with this form of contrast there is something which is known as iso osmolar contrast which is exactly the same density as the blood is that means the uh, density of the contrast is exactly uh, if at all blood density is 300 so the density will be also 300 some studies have shown that this is much better in especially in the high risk patient and the kidney related patients and if at all this contrast which is much more costlier if at all it is used in kidney patients the chances of kidney related damage because of contrast is much lesser but this contrast is even more costlier even almost 2 to 3 times costlier as compared to the regular non ionic contrast so this is used in only very selected cases otherwise although people will ask why are not no if it is much safer why are you not using it for all the cases the problem is that if at all we use it for all the cases the cost of the procedure will shoot up several times and almost every angiographic procedure will be almost 2 3000 more costlier as compared to what it is uh, as of now because this contrast is almost uh, the uh, ionic contrast usually the cost is around 800 to 1000 rupee is for a 100 ml bottle Uh, this uh, for this non ionic contrast the cost will be almost double and for a uh, iso osmolar contrast the cost will be almost uh, for a 50 ml bottle the cost will be around 2500 or 3000 so the cost is almost four times to five times as compared to a non ionic contrast for a iso osmolar contrast that is why it is used in only very selected and very high risk cases because for all procedures india is a very cost sensitive country so in all cases we cannot use this very costly dye because uh, the people are very worried about the cost of the procedure also in some cases in some uh, high risk patients we has do use this iso osmolar contrast but not in all cases and studies have shown that even iso osmolar contrast the results are almost similar the results are not matlab the difference is not very huge some amount of difference might be there but the difference is not enormous the difference is not very huge that is why the results do not vary in uh, the iso osmolar contrast and compared to the other forms of non ionic contrast but uh, of course with the ionic contrast because the difference is huge in these cases the uh, uh, ionic contrast is not used in majority of the cases because the difference with ionic as compared to iso iso osmolar the difference is huge with iso osmolar as compared to other forms of non ionic contrast the difference is not that much that is why unnecessary increase of cost is usually avoided but obviously it is better if at all you are using iso osmolar contrast uh the adverse effects of contrast is the sometimes it can cause allergic reactions the newer forms and the better generation contrast the allergic reactions will be much lesser as compared to the older generation and the ionic contrast the contrast usually the biggest problem with the contrast is that it can damage the kidneys the 
uh, the kidney is the organ which filters out the contrast and the contrast is flushed out in the urine if at all the kidney is already damaged then the chances of the contrast damaging the kidneys is much higher if at all the kidney is functioning normally then the chances of the contrast related damage to the kidney is much lesser but whatever damage does occur the damage is usually seen within the first 3 to 4 days after giving a contrast it will usually not occur that you are giving a contrast now and after 3 years there will be some kidney damage it is not like that some people do ask us in uh, comment section also that i had done a ct angio 3 years ago now my kidney is showing some problems is can that be related to that contrast use or can uh, i be at risk of developing some kidney related problems in future also so if at all the contrast related damage does occur it is usually seen within the first 2 to 3 days after administering the contrast long term damage of contrast is usually seen in less than 1% of the cases next important problem with the contrast is that it can cause some cardiac overload also if at all the patient is having a severe heart failure and the pump function is very low and you administer large amount of contrast especially the ionic forms of contrast the patient can go into sudden heart failure and can suddenly deteriorate it that is why in large majority of this patient it is recommended that we use the minimum amount of contrast as possible and we maintain good hydration for the body we give the patient large amount of water before the plasty also and after the plasty also and as minimum amount of contrast and as better quality contrast we use the better will be the results although it, uh, even with the best quality and the iso osmolar contrast also it does not guarantee that there will be no kidney damage sometimes kidney damage can still occur that is why angiography is not a procedure which is done for each and every cases and just the patient comes and walk in and we do an angiography like that we always evaluate the creatinine levels of the patient and in selected cases only when it is required we do an angiography it is not a procedure which is done on a routine screening basis similar is for ct angio also because ct angio will involve much higher amount of contrast as compared to regular angio a conventional catheter angio is much safer in a kidney disease or a heart failure patient because the contrast used is hardly 10 to 15 ml and that too can be used in a much more diluted form also but in a ct angio the contrast amount which will be used is almost 100 ml so 10 times amount of contrast will be used so ct angio is absolutely banned or contraindicated in patients with kidney damage and even in selected cases where ct angio is being used uh, for very sure shot indications and uh, patients where absolutely they cannot work out without ct angio then only it is used and that too sometimes the patient is taken for an immediate dialysis in such cases and only in borderline cases with a creatinine of 1.5 to 2 maximum you can do a ct angio otherwise it is usually contraindicated in kidney disease patients regular angio can still be performed even in dialysis patients but the contrast used is much lesser and uh, we have to be much more careful and sometimes we have to immediately follow the angiography or angioplasty with a dialysis uh, after the procedure Uh, extra precautions are taken, and recently the concept of contrastless angioplasty has also come up, wherein we use an intravascular ultrasound to guide the angioplasty procedure. We do a pre-angioplasty IVAS run, uh, intravascular ultrasound catheter is passed inside the vessel, and we see the blockage uh, position from where to where uh, it, the stent has to place. Then we put a stent, uh, uh, seeing the position on the floor without use of a contrast. then we once we deploy the stent again we use a intravascular ultrasound to guide whether the stent is appropriately de uh, deployed or not and finally while coming out we use a diluted contrast to take a single shoot or a maximum two shoots are taken so in this the entire angioplasty can be finished in less than 10 ml of contrast in comparison to a routine angioplasty which usually requires around 50 ml to 70 ml of contrast uh, angiography usually involves 10 to 15 ml of contrast contrast less angioplasty it will require uh, not zero contrast but maybe 5 to 10 ml of contrast is required because there are some things which i was may also not be able to tell so completely contrast free as of now is not practical the results might be compromised only very simple cases can be done with that but majority of the cases the contrast used is less than 1/10th of what is regularly used for other cases or maybe one at least 1/5 in dialysis patients or in the patients where who are already having a compromised kidney or the kidney function is very bad we ideally recommend the contrastless angioplasty or iwas guided angioplasty or the patient has to be hydrated and immediately after the procedure the patient has to be rushed for a dialysis because if at all the patient is not dialyzed and the contrast is not filtered inside the uh, kidneys or if the patient especially if the patient is anuric and is not producing any urine then contrast will act like a toxin and it will damage the heart and the kidney much more that is why the patient has to be rushed for a dialysis as far as possible in dialysis patient or as far as possible in kidney damage related patients we do not do an angiography unless it is absolutely essential 
we can still do it but we usually avoid it for only sure shot indications and when the patients come with an acute or a massive heart attack only then only we usually do an angiography angioplasty procedure in these patients otherwise for all practical purposes uh, 95% of the times we will usually try to avoid angioplasty or angiography related procedure or any contrast related procedure in these cases even the mri gadolinium contrast which is used uh in this patient that also is not very safe in kidney disease related patient that is also mri uh, also in kidney disease patient is also usually done without contrast very selected cases we are doing adelium enhanced scans mri scans in kidney related patients although the mechanism of damage is entirely different for gadolinium but still that is not completely safe in patients who are having permanent kidney damage uh, conventional angio we have discussed that ct angio is completely contraindicated in patients with Uh, kidney damage and should not be done unless it is absolutely essential in patients who are having a long standing kidney related problem contrast related damage to the kidney usually can improve with 2 uh, to 3 days or within 5 to 7 days after the kidney damage in majority of the cases it is self limiting only less than 5% of the cases sometimes we require uh, dialysis for an acute kidney failure and less than 1% of the cases who already have a compromised kidney might go into a long term dialysis but majority of the cases will never require a dialysis majority of the cases it will recover on its own and it is a phenomena which is itself seen in a very few cases less than 5% of the cases maybe if uh, appropriate precautions are taken then the chances will be less than 1% in majority of the cases that is why it is something which should not be feared upon in all the cases but in selected cases where the kidney is already compromised the patient is diabetic or multiple risk factors pertaining to kidney are there or the patient is dehydrated these are the patients where the uh, chances of problem related to contrast are much higher that is why contrast should be used very selectively in these cases and a uh, contrast related nephropathy should be taken care of medicines usually cannot prevent the contrast related nephropathy there is no medicine which is available some studies show that any cystine cystine and some uh, kidney related molecules can be used but there is no conclusive evidence which shows that contrast related nephropathy can be reduced by this medicine to a significant proportion although an cystine cystine is given to majority of the patients who have a kidney related damage because that is the only molecule which is available which has some evidence that it can show some benefit but majority of the cases show that use minimum contrast use uh, the best quality contrast and hydrate the patient appropriately only these are the things which can prevent kidney damage in a patient who has already had a compromised kidney and angiography or angioplasty is absolutely compulsory in this patient then only it should be done with the minimum amount of contrast in this topic we have discussed what is contrast and why exactly it is used and what are the indications of using of a contrast what exactly is contrast nephropathy and how can we be prevented if at all you have any comments queries or suggestions or if at all you have any other topics on which you want us to make more videos you can write to us about them in the comment section patient related queries also we'll try to answer them if at all you have written to us in the comment section at the end this is dr navin agrawal and i thank you all for a very patient listening if you you are new to my channel i would be happy if it all you subscribe to my channel because that would give us a lot of inspiration and motivation to continue the channel in future thank you